started here. People are coming into our live room for Tags Live. Hello, hello. And hello, hello. I just got to notice that we should go live. Okay, great. What is going on? You are watching and, of course, listening to Tags Live, a.k.a. Talk About Gay Sex, the live edition, where we are here every Wednesday evening on the Crowdcast platform. Some of you morning, too, because we have somebody tuning in from Bangkok and he's Ooh. watching it's already Thursday over there I, <laughs> it is. this is episode 555 I am your host Steve V here in Oakland California thank you so much alongside Cody Maurice Dalget holding down the fort in Kansas hey hello darling how are you darling Good. We're just some travel bunnies over here. I know. Catch us if so you can. <laughs> we should make our movie like about that, about travel and catch me if you can. Yeah. Like Leonardo exactly. DiCaprio and uh, Tom Cru No, Tom Hanks. That's who it was. Okay. All right. Good pop culture <laughs> moment there. Well, we are happy to be here in front of a live virtual audience. We've got a great show ahead of you. So many hot topics, sex and relationship advice, plus so much more. Those of you watching us live, though, put your comments, ask your questions in the comment section, and we will be sure to get through them throughout this next hour. Well, we have to start with hot topics. And Cody, I had heard that I was watching with my mom the other day, last I believe it was last night, and the iHeart Music Awards were on, I think it was Monday night, actually, after okay. we recorded Tag's podcast, and we both wanted to see Cher because she was getting like a Lifetime Achievement Award or Inspiration Award, I believe oh, is what she was getting. She deserves. She deserves. Yeah. And so we wanted to see and she was going to perform. No, Lo and behold, we're like, we forgot about it. And then we turned on the TV. And then all of a sudden, as we turned on the TV, Cher was literally, it was her segment, right? And Jennifer mm -hmm. Hudson, J-Hud, was going to be presenting her with this award. But she was singing a Cher song. And it was the iconic song from the 80s, If I Could Turn Back Time. Loved her rendition of it. It was so great. It's one of my favorite songs by Cher in general. One of my favorite songs in general in life, too. I just think it's so, oh. you know, awesome. And we were just so, like, our timing was perfect. Like, we didn't have to sit through all these awards that we didn't, Justin Timberlake and some other people <laughs> that we didn't really care to see. Wait, and did you see Beyonce? We did. We did end up seeing oh, okay. Beyonce. And she, gave a great, she got a great speech. But before... Jennifer Hudson is singing and then all of a sudden Cher comes out Jennifer introduces her they segue into Believe and Cher sings Believe which is another iconic favorite track by Cher the mm -hmm. dance track she did a great job she looked great she was wearing pants that she has worn since I believe the 80s and she still fits in oh. them and looked amazing I know she great gave a really fun inspirational hilarious as Cher can only do speech yeah. very down to earth but gave some really great advice to some you know newcomers too on how to be an inspiring person and singer and all that good stuff well afterwards the Cher and Jennifer Hudson sang I think they rounded out believe together and Ooh. And it was really great. And you know, Jennifer Hudson is a lot, very extra, right? She loves to go on a whole singing <laughs> tangent. <laughs> and she did just that. And she really held out the the end of the song. And I thought it was great. Cher looked like she was happy. But a lot of fans of Cher said that J-Hud upstaged her during one of Cher's most famous songs. And when it was supposed to be all about Cher, they are accusing Jennifer of upstaging her. And I say, please, online community. I mean, seriously, it's like Cher knew that Jennifer Hudson was going to present this. Cher knew that they were going to do this duet together. Cher is probably very aware that J-Hud is going to howl it out because that's what <laughs> she does. And she looked like she was just having a great time. I mean, it's an honor. They're both great. I don't know why. Yeah. People love to come for people and just say like, oh, this one did this one. It's like there was no hate filled. What do you feel about this? Oh, yeah. Uh, I know that Cher, she looked like she was having an amazing time. She supports women. She supports other artists. She is not a hater like some of these people on the Internet. And she definitely was living her life 
with Jennifer Hudson. I feel like I would be madder at the sound people because if anybody stole Cher's moment, her microphone was not to the level it should have been. It, sa it sounded like she couldn't hear herself. It was, Jennifer Hudson was sounding really good, but Cher's part, I feel like the microphone was off. And because well, I thought she sounded good, but you know, I'm not a professional in that industry. Uh, to me, it sounded good, but you okay. know. Yeah, but I, mean, I know you're you're more technical and you know singing, so I get yeah. it. Yeah, so yeah, but like for me, there were some snafus as far as the performance, but not Cher or Jennifer Hudson related. I feel like there was some sound issues. And that Cher looked like she was doing her life, and she's not a hater. She's a great, great person and a great role model. And yeah, I don't Haters see where the hubbub is. Yeah, exactly. It's just they, you know, people always have something to say, especially always. Every, you know, when it comes to our icons. Heaven forbid somebody oversteps a boundary. I remember when Madonna gave a tribute shortly after Prince had passed away, and mm -hmm. she did a whole Purple Rain moment. And people were like, "Why is Madonna doing this? She's not black. She shouldn't be doing this." And it was like, "Come on, there. You know, there's going to be eighty five hundred more tributes to Prince coming up." Madonna happened to be one of the first ones, certainly not going to be the last. Just yeah. let them give the tribute and stop critiquing a tribute. So it's just too also much. to that token, they knew each other. They probably were somewhat close or what have yeah. you. And who who cares? Who's singing a song, a tribute to their friend? That's ridiculous. It is. They, they need to get out of the, ch the group chat. Sorry. Speaking of our group chat here, because we are live, Malibu says, Cody, speaking of songs, your song is terrific. Talk about it. I listened oh, to it on Spotify a few times. I hope you pursue. Does it go on to oh, say? Thank you, pursue. Malibu. Yeah, pursue. Right. And you are. And that's why you're in Kansas and doing more. That's why I'm in so Kansas. Talk About It is available wherever you download your music. Okay. Well, we've got to move oh, on <laughs> because we keep talking about soft and hard launching relationships and the latest is a favorite of Tag's podcast, who we talk about a lot. I'm talking about John Sibley. John Sibley, you'll know from Queer as Folk, the, the newer edition of it that only had one season, sadly. But John's done a ton of stuff. You can also catch him on Hacks, where he mm -hmm. is delicious on that show. And hopefully a, few, a lot more things coming down the pipeline. But John Sibley recently hard launched his new boyfriend on Twitter, and everybody seems to be swooning over his new beau because they are so cute. And I'm talking about Philip Davis, the new beau, who's 36 year old, 36, mm. uh, an actor, a film producer. And initially, he posted a mirror selfie with him, which his followers were more than happy about. I'm talking about John. He thereafter shared a sweet selfie with his boyfriend giving him a kiss on the temple and now they've hard photo dumped a ton over this past Ooh. weekend and they look really good together a little tea on that his boyfriend actually has an only fans which i think is really oh. cool and i decided to go check out philip davis's twitter just to see oh, how much he might he be subscribed. showing no, I didn't get that far. <laughs> Maybe we could collab. <laughs> Maybe we could collab together. Ooh, that would be cool. I put that out into the so. universe. He's hot. So, yeah. You know, some of these, I don't know if he collabs or not. And I don't know how much he shows. And going to his Twitter account, he, he showed his dick, but like the top portion of it a few different times. Uh -huh. One of the them roof. was funny. The roof, he said, um, he just wanted to come out and say hi as he's giving, and it looked oh. thick. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and it looked Oh, he's thick, funny. Okay. <laughs> funny. It was looked thick and delicious. John Sibley should be really happy, but of course, hard launching him and they both look really lovely together and I'm really happy for John because he looks like he was single for a minute and to hard launch this boyfriend seems really cool. What do you think? Oh yeah, it's great. Good for him. I'm so happy for him that he found love again because his last boyfriend was really hot too girl oh okay <laughs> oh okay <laughs> and johnny's such a gorgeous man so i'm glad that he's pulling all the, the cuties and he should leave some for me though because i you know i need a date honey uh but i'm also here for the hard launch i mean if you put in the work and you have that good foundation why not hard launch a boyfriend and just let everybody know that you're in love love is great and i love feel is like great. everybody 
Yeah, okay. soft and hard launching your boyfriend, I think, is really great. I think you need to the soft I get, and that probably takes a minute. Jeremy, our co-host, was talking about that. That when you yeah. soft, you know, people are going to be asking questions, and you really do need to know that this is somebody that you're going to be spending a lot of time with, and that you trust that we are in this because questions are going to be coming. We're going to be talking about it on shows like this. And in the event that it doesn't work out, we're going to be talking about it on shows like this and everybody's <laughs> going to be asking questions. So you really need to know. I do now get, I was joking before on several previous shows. It's hilarious, like a marketing brand, because I used to work in marketing and you would soft launch, you would hard launch products. Mm -hmm. And just, it's so, it was so funny to me to to hear people talking about their relationship status soft and hard launching and i think this is the new facebook remember when you would put on there <laughs> what was that term uh, in a relationship or it's complicated it's, and all those yeah of, this has yeah. replaced I, that with soft and hard i'm all about soft and hard of course but yeah. i get it but i think you really do need to be confident with it and be confident knowing that even if th this is really serious and that's why I'm hard launching it. And even mm -hmm. if it doesn't work out, I will take the repercussions and talk about that too. That's right. And if it doesn't work out, like you said, delete everything. It never happened. It never existed. You could re reboot and start all over <laughs> and erase everything. You, uh, you are in a really good position because you could be uh, like write a whole album about the breakup. And, and, and you and know, say, girl, <laughs> I'm writing one about the relationship. I'm writing about the breakup. <laughs> yeah, I'm writing it's about all... Every Hey, it's all about content, right? So come on. Taylor now. Swift ain't got nothing on me, girl. Cause she yeah. I need to find the next one for the next album because it's it's you know, this one's almost done. So Exactly. Well, let's stay on dating and we love it when you talk back to us and one of you sinfully who often puts you and I in a threesome or at least a three-way conversation. <laughs> we might want to be in a threesome with him, but I mean, sin he is a sexy man. So <laughs> exactly. Hey, Sinful boo. <laughs> sinfully was responding to episode 553. And this is where we were talking about Cody, remember what we were talking about or about relationships and yeah. when somebody we were giving advice on a Reddit thread of somebody mm -hmm. that felt that in their current relationship, they're always the one that shares what's going on. And they felt like maybe their partner wasn't asking enough questions like, well, how's your day? What's you what are you excited about? However, he yep. did mention in that same conversation that his boyfriend does mm -hmm like we'll show it in different ways so he'll like drop off a special gift or he'll do it maybe in a way and teddy our co-host that day was saying well yeah i mean people show things in different ways and it's not always the same there's different languages of love i think so with that reference this is what simply wrote and he wanted us to discuss so i was listening to episode 553 where you two were discussing conversations i have a question for you too why do you think the expectation is always on the more reserved introverted people to match the level of outgoing extroverted people as someone that has always been really introverted my interactions with people that i'm meeting for the first time are usually reserved and i tend to be a man of few words for me i really Really have to feel out a situation and the people involved before opening up social interactions are very draining for me even ones with really close friends so i like to protect my energy like with anything in life there has to be a middle ground some people and just getting to like some people love going to parties and talking to everyone and standing in front of a big crowd talking for hours is that us, Cody? <laughs> whereas others don't about enjoy, to find out. <laughs> whereas others don't enjoy small talk and prefer smaller groups or one-on-one -on -one deeper conversations. In the idea of getting up in front of a group and taking uh, and talking can be very stressful. I fall into the latter, he says. And lastly, he says, I think when it comes to social interactions, the two camps have to acknowledge each other and not ask the other to change, but find some common ground and respect each other's differences. And I agree with that last part that you shouldn't. And it's kind of what I think we were saying in that conversation, the original conversation, is that mm -hmm. not everybody is going to show things in the same capacity and range that you do. 
And you just have to know that you're feeling the love and that you're receiving it. I mean, there's always room to say to your partner that maybe if you are lacking something, you can always say something to them, I think. But also, like, do a whole assessment of what you are getting. And everything doesn't need to be exactly the same. I think when I was younger, I wanted people to act the way I did for it to mm -hmm. be a successful quote unquote relationship. And today I, Hey, if I vibe with you, I vibe with you and we don't have to be the same at all. I mean, we have to have a few things that we're excited about, but I don't really need to do and, and we don't have to interact the same way and like the exact same things. And I just, I've learned that as I've grown and there is somebody that I keep talking about that I've been spending some time with in New York that we are, we have a couple things that we're really into that are exciting and fun. And then there's other things where we're very, very different. And I think it's just a growing thing and I love it. What do you say? Oh yeah. I totally agree with you. I think that it's something that you definitely feel out that uh, the the connection has to be there and you de there has to be this mutual respect. I related to so many of the things that Simply was saying, actually. When I'm in a lot of social situations, oftentimes I like fall back and take uh, stock of what's going on in the room. And then it it how I feel about the room and the people in the room uh, affects how I show up. Maybe mm -hmm. it's not the right space for me to be so overt and crass or what have you, but I definitely like to uh, take a step back and then reassess what's actually going on. So, and I think that um, acknowledgement is a good start. Uh, it's all about respect and boundaries, in my opinion. Uh, I remember when I was dating my ex, <laughs> he loved <Right>. to go, <laughs> he loved to go, say we were at like a circuit party. He would love to go into the crowd and uh, dance with all the people and have all those people on top of you. I'm not necessarily into that 100% of the time. Right. I'm more of an outskirts dancer and... Uh, and I, I don't like all those people on top of me all the time. So I feel like what would happen generally is that he would go into the crowd and I would stand on the side and bop around. That was totally fine. And then sometimes he would come out to the outskirts with me and dance and what have you. And sometimes I would go into the crowd with him. It's all about compromise, in my opinion. And I think that that is the place where we all need to start. We need to recognize each other's differences and compromise and see how we can make things work. Because it's all about working at the end of the day. Right. If you really like somebody, you're going to make those compromises. And it's there's that spark that is keeping you guys together. And so, yeah, yeah I mean... I kudos to him for saying how he operates. He's just more of um, an introvert. And, you know, intro we shouldn't make introverts rise to being chatty Cathy's if they're not that. And, yeah. uh, and if, you know, often opposites attract. And so if opposites attract and one's an introvert and one's an extrovert, you know, don't force that other one to be the, the other thing that you're not. Find some common ground. Yeah, and something that kind of just came to me was that in the moment, and I've had this experience on both sides, actually, in the moment, if somebody seems a little bit more reserved, you wonder what is going on with them necessarily. So I definitely see that from that perspective or that point of view that people not talking to you can be a red flag to some people and then it makes things a little bit awkward. But again, we have to not make it about ourselves at the right. end of the day it's could they could be having a bad day and they don't want to talk to anybody it could be a million different things so at the end of the day we just have to respect each other they could be having a bad day you could be putting them on the spot when they're not used to being on the spot they don't want to talk in a group situation if you're trying to get something out of somebody and just leave them alone maybe they're just <laughs> introverts and just leave me alone <laughs> leave, leave people alone mike um mike, mike watching us from bangkok this thursday morning because he's ahead of us over there says it's a balance between respecting each other's differences and trying to bridge them when possible totally agree i think that's what we were essentially saying as well well thank you and we always love it when you comment or have something to say on some of the hot topics that we're talking about so keep them coming we'll give our dm 
handles in a little bit at the end of the show, or you can always go to tagspodcast.com and message us there. Okay, well, let's move on to more hot topics because recently Gen Zers were talking about, there was a whole thing about Gen Zers prefer first dates to be digital instead of meeting people in person. And they say that it's if more efficient. It's costs are obviously are rising to go to restaurants costs a lot of money and before they're investing in somebody they are actually meeting them online and seeing if they even want to get to know them and at first I thought this sounded very like mm, I don't think I'm for this because you know me I'm always in a bar at a restaurant sidling up to people striking up a conversation but this kind of makes sense to me Cody and this was done by dating app wingman where it surveyed 500 people from the ages of 18 to 27 on their dating preferences and they found that a staggering <clears throat> excuse me 65 percent preferred to meet digitally the most significant change since the height of the uh, the coronavirus and users in that younger age group just absolutely don't have to, don't have to bat an eye they are they think it's just more efficient what do you think about this <sighs> Something about this is ringing a little bit strange to me. <laughs> Actually, I'm not in Gen Z. I know, shocker, right? <laughs> so I had to, I went to go speak to my nephew who is a Gen Zer. And he said a lot of Gen Z people, the reason that this might be attractive to them is because maybe they're socially awkward or maybe they don't have a lot of time and things of that nature. And uh, that it might be easier for them to meet people online as opposed to meeting them in person and then maybe vetting them on the first date uh, that way. Uh, to me, that just seems a little bit backwards. But when he was talking to me, I realized that I did have experiences like this because when I was a little bit younger, maybe in my uh, late 20s, I had two different online relationships and not relationships. I was dating them basically or okay. what have you, quote unquote. And I think that the thing that really uh, hit, struck me about that is that they could have been catfish for all I know. And I'm pretty sure that one of them was actually a catfish. So I, I don't think it is the best thing to... Well, let me stop you right there because what the people are doing in this study and what they're saying is they actually turn on their Zoom. Were you doing oh. that video? Because they're having these dates in the comfort of their home, but like on a Zoom call, you're talking about online chit chatting and back and forth, which I could agree could be catfishing and yeah. that would make me nervous too. Would you be into a... Because to me, I find it more like a numbers game where okay. you can see, like, it's the next step between the phone apps where you essentially are talking and talking and a lot of people never seem to, there's a lot of people that don't convert to an actual date, right? They want to be mm -hmm. pen pals, as I said before, or my sister says. And this is like <laughs> that nice step in between where I feel like you could take a pooling of people that you're interested in and do almost like a round robin chat a speed with date a thing? speed date. <laughs> you could just pick a random Thursday and cause not Wednesday cause you're watching tags live <laughs> and you could do this and meet a bunch of people. And then out of those that you met, you could then go on an actual date. <clears throat> I don't know, Steve. It sounds really impersonal to me. I feel like I it really does because hmm. I I get it. I understand that, like you said, it's a numbers game. And the more right. people you can go on a date with, the more you can see who you actually vibe with. But vibing isn't all about the chat. It's all it's more for me about the in person vibe. There's so yeah. many non verbal cues that you get from people when you're actually on a date with them and they're sitting across from you. You can see how they treat the waiter. You can see all of these other things. If they're uh, affectionate in public, things of that nature that you that you might have a, a better sense of by meeting them in person. And that to me, that that's leaps and bounds above a, a Zoom call. That just seems really impersonal and unromantic to well, me. Well, I, like, I was saying, I think it's like a nice bridge. So you could yeah. do a bunch of them and out of those, the goal would be ultimately to meet one of these people in person. I just think mm -hmm. it, I see the sense of why so many Gen Zers are 
going towards this. And the study also said that many of it had to do with financial reasons because a lot of people don't have a ton of money right now to go. Yeah, Even that. for cocktails can be, you know, you want to go to a decent place to meet somebody for a cocktail. And even happy hour these days, at least in New York or where we live, is not the cheapest. And it's like, so, and if, if you wanted to meet a, a pooling of people to see who you vibe with, it's that intern moment. And then you meet like two out of the 10 that you actually want to then go on the drink it's you could weed out a few more then you can get to the part that you're talking about where you sit in front of them i just think it's a nice bridge between the apps and then actually meeting in person it's this like bridge moment where you actually yeah. see people and i get what gen, why gen zers are saying because of the financial reasons too you're not going to go on 10 different dates on 10 different cocktail dates and now you're out how much so i see why gen zers are going down that route i'm not saying i'm going to do it but i hear i think it's a valid and i see why this is a valid study that they're doing it so Oh yeah, I, and I agree with you. I see all of the points, I understand them. I think that the, it's very efficient, but to me it's giving job interview instead of romantic date. Got it, okay. Uh, let's move on to somebody that we've talked about on this show before, a comedian, out comedian, Gerard Carmichael, who has a brand new docuseries that is just dropped i can't wait to watch it because it really looks like he's divulging so much doesn't it cody on this new he's really series? opening up <laughs> you know he's black so a lot of it has to do with his family and he is you know he had a whole netflix special that won awards and has done really well now he's back with this he's been touring he's doing really great he puts everything out in this brand new docuseries including Things like who he's dating. Um, he's been sucking on some toes, which I'm not mad at. He has a foot hey. fetish, apparently. And he also had one of his best friends on the show who he admits on the show that he had a thing for. And he said, I fell in love with my best friend. One out of ten, I don't recommend. I knew I had to tell him things started getting kind of weird between us. I had these feelings, so I texted him. I remember saying, I don't, I know you didn't ask for this, but somewhere down the line, I developed feelings for you, and I don't know what to do with that. Then I immediately turned my phone off and went to therapy. Um, he's talking, <laughs> <laughs> he's talking about rapper, um, what's the Tyler rapper? The Tyler, the creator. Tyler, the creator, that is Gerard's, friend and this is and so he decided that he asked tyler if hey could we film this on my new show and it's going to get real personal and tyler the creator said sure let's do it but the whole scene <laughs> and you can watch a little bit of it online before you can no, watch it number one <laughs> i would have said no too it was really cringeworthy because when gerard says hey i messaged you and remember when i did that and you didn't respond and then when you did respond you didn't really address it you said you're being i think he said you're being stupid and didn't really ever address the situation at hand he said and he also changed the subject to eating in the in the reality show <laughs> tyler started eating a sandwich in front of him and he still didn't it was really it's really cringeworthy even the little bit that i saw yeah. um a what do you think of this and have you ever been in this situation where you like somebody <laughs> and it just they weren't on the same page me no 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 darling <laughs> well steve first i have a confession i need to make to yes. you yes Okay, Steve. Oh my God! Do not do that. <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious. The confession is this will never happen to us. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, this is rough. I really felt bad for Jared because he really put it all out on the line, and he was really honest, and it did not work out the maybe the way that he envisioned. Because in your in the back of your mind, you hope and you dream that this person is going to say to you, oh, I love you back. This is let's try and make this work. And but it did not happen for him. That's really it's really sad, actually. Uh, I don't know that I have ever been in love with some a friend 
that uh, did not had a I had a crush on a friend that uh, didn't love me back, but I know that a friend has had a crush on me that was in love with me, mm-hmm. and he he confessed to it, and I did not feel that way about him. He was one of my best friends. We, yeah, and <laughs> I was going to say let him down. I did. Easy. I let him did down. Did it change the easy. relationship between yes, you two? That's just what I was getting to. I let, okay. I was straightforward. I said to him, I did not. I didn't. I do not feel this way about you. I think that you're an amazing person, and I wish the best for you. But uh, this is not. I don't. I don't see you that way. Unfortunately, it. After that, I thought that things could go back to normal, but it made it weird, and it made mm. I because I knew in my heart of heart that I had hurt him. Number one and number two that he still was holding on to maybe me being you know, coming to my senses, quote unquote. Yeah, see, that's always the problem is that people hold on to, I've been in that situation too where I've had people like be, they were friends and they, same thing. And, but we were able, sometimes it doesn't work out to your point. Um, I've been in this situation where I have liked somebody and they were a former go-go dancer in New York Uh and they would show little signs that maybe they were, they would tease me a little bit. So then I would think I had a chance. I even, they mm-hmm. were my date to my birthday once. And I had this huge, oh, wow. lavish birthday. And they showed everybody was like, who is this? And I was, I was almost soft launching this dancer <laughs> of mine at the time. Come on, recall. <laughs> I know. And he, he played along with it, but ultimately he just wasn't really into me that way. And he was also not really gay. He's somewhere in between Girl, all of that. He's kind of in between all that. Like, so I know probably. So I think, um, but here's the good news on that one. I, over time, we, we didn't talk for a while we just let things pass and we are now really close friends and hang out all the time we've moved into a different echelon of friendship now Mm -hmm. uh almost brotherly and it's great like i love him so much he loves me and it's practically barney and everything is happy go lucky sometimes you just need a little bit of time i think and to because it can get awkward right oh yeah it can definitely get awkward Uh, you know what i have even had thoughts of maybe I had a friend that I thought maybe there could be a connection like that with but with everything that I went through with my former friend because we still keep in contact a little bit but not as much as we used to unfortunately got it and and that made me wary of going or uh, maybe trying to explore a romantic relationship with any friends because uh, I saw what it did to our relationship and I never wanted to have that happen to me again, unfortunately. Yeah, it can be tricky, but the new season of uh, Gerard Carmichael's reality show, which I think it has a full name here, but you can look it up, is it's weekly episodes on Friday on HBO starting, started on March 29th at 11 p.m. Oh. It's also going to be streaming on Max if you have that to check it out. I'm going to be watching it because it looks interesting. And I really think Gerard is somebody... Well, I like him. I'm not a total, I'm not there yet, but I think he gets it on what the way you have to put things out there these days to from his comedy to his life. This is the way we operate now. And it often has to be awkward too. And you almost have to divulge more in today's media, I think, to elicit a response. And he's on that right path. He's somebody that oh, yeah. I look up to for that. And I think he's on the right path to this. I will be watching. Will you be watching or no? Oh, yeah. I have okay. Max. I'm going to be giving him a, a nice listen because I want to see how his story evolves, definitely. Got it. Okay, well, let's go into some health talk because we are a sex podcast. And I'm talking about Dr. Levine because Dr. Rachel Levine, who's transgender, is also the Assistant Secretary for Health. I should say Dr. Rachel Levine is the Assistant Secretary for Health, who also happens to just be transgender, but she is warning everyone in our community to heed warning with syphilis because numbers are on the rise. Um, A pediatrician who oversaw Pennsylvania's health system was nominated 
nominated and approved to be the Assistant Secretary for Health at the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. The LGBTQ plus community and allies erupted in celebration and support as a trans woman with significant influence over America's health care. Dr. Levine survived a GOP lawmaker onslaught of dissent dissension on her nomination well she is here to tell us that uh national syphilis and congenital syphilis syndemic um task force um she had the pleasure to recently attend this and she said i found um she, her focus on the growing sexual health realities of our community and other americans including trans health mental health and so forth and now nearly three years it's time for our community to get serious about syphilis the sexually transmitted disease specifically that has been rising to historic levels and it's up to each of us to stop the spread data released in january from the cdc said and reinforced by dr levine's guidance shows a sharp uptick in the mill in um, excuse me, in the number of syphilis cases with a 17% rise over the previous year with 2.5 million STD cases reported to the CDC. And mm -hmm. this is why she's just warning us to, you know, get tested more often, I think is really her main focus. And uh, I know that we've been talking a little bit about doxycycline, doxypep that you can get, which when taken correctly can also reduce it when you take it up to 72 hours post sexual activity. Um, my Dr. Goldstein prescribed it for me and I only use it when I think I've been in a high sexual element, but I also try and get tested more often than not because while I am on prep, I'm also sexually active at times, but I'm also an OnlyFans creator now and I just need to be tested more often, not just for myself, yeah. but also for my partners that I mm -hmm. am seeing. What do you say to Dr. Levine's message about syphilis and other STDs? Well, I love that she's putting this out here and I, I just want to speak on Dr. Rachel Levine for a second. Uh, she is amazing and I'm so glad that she's speaking truth to power. And it, it's amazing that she's overcome so many hurdles because she's gone through a lot with the GOP. And so snaps to you, mama. Thank you so much for doing all of this. I'm actually really afraid of getting syphilis because the things that can happen to you and the fact that it can go undetected for a, a, a period of time, it, it makes me a, a, a afraid and it makes me think that it is something that I could act actually get and it could just wreck my life from there and it's not just the lgbtq plus community uh it's all communities as the article said and the numbers are getting wild so everybody be as safe as possible like steve said not only for yourself but for everybody because the more you're aware of your statuses then the better off we all will be I agree. I mean, I think the message is there. I think it's great coming from Dr. Levine because I feel like she has her best interests in mind. So if she's saying something like this, we've heard it before, STDs are on the rise in general. But rather than fear, I think fear, you know, what can we do? I'm not going to change a lot of my habits necessarily. Although as a community we did with monkeypox, we heeded warnings. And we did change. And so unless they're seeing things like during that period, we need to reduce our sexual partners to combat the rise of monkeypox. And our community did rise to the occasion. I say get tested more often. Don't change your practices as much. I mean, just mm -hmm. be aware of it because it's out there. But also don't live in fear. And if you could get tested more often than not, and there's all kinds of ways to get tested. And I'm talking about things like Mr., which is online and anonymous that you can do and often free for you. So if you don't find yourself in a community where you can run to a free clinic or you don't want to go to your doctor because you don't want to get them involved, you can intersperse this like Mr.com, which we've had Tristan on the show who heads up Mr. CEO. And there's just other ways that you can 
get on top of it so that you don't find yourself because if you do find yourself getting it it's not a death sentence there are yeah. ways to combat it and just you just don't want it to linger on and that's why testing more often is probably the message right now that she's yes. really advocating for i agree yeah yeah so, okay health alert and we got to talk about some salacious news because because <laughs> the first out gay NCAA wrestler who everybody was tooting up, I'm talking about Alec Donovan, 26, from New Jersey, who was like everybody's golden child for so long. He was 2015 out sports person that he was on the cover of many things donovan he gained fame as the first known out gay wrestler in ncaa history and then later went on to the centenary university in hackstown after experiencing homophobia and this is a time when his his longtime classmate female encouraged him to come out which he did so he was being praised for years well now he is may face some hard jail time because of child porn he was becoming the youth wrestling coach and he is admitted to exchanging nude selfies with minors it's so sad prosecutors have alleged that donovan used an internet-based app to exchange images and videos depicting the abuse of children and he was also charged with using a web-based messaging app to solicit illegal imagery from children as well as a sending nude selfies and imageries to children talk about the rise and fall of a hero within our community cody of alec donovan what do you say to this it's so sad and gross i'm not gonna tout him as a as a hero that he was, he was fake like he was oh yeah well, we thought he was he we thought uh, he was oh hero yes yes yeah <laughs> let's call olivia pope though because this is a scandal and it's crazy <laughs> and okay, in New Jersey, washington all plays, i know right i used to love that show i'm so glad you got it <laughs> <laughs> Love it. <laughs> but this is really horrific. And they're definitely going to throw the book at this person because yeah. he really deserves it. You, in my opinion, you just don't do this thing to type of thing to kids because it just scars them for life. And it's, it's right. they're going to go through so much trauma. And I really feel bad for the kids. Uh, so they need to throw the back book at him and just put him underneath the jail. I can't even talk to a 19 year old on Grindr. So I don't understand. <laughs> how he even, ugh, i just can't it's just unfathomable uh, unfathomable to me you could because... talk to listen cody no, if you i mean want, i could <laughs> i would just check the id because to your point i was you know we've been doing these since we're traveling and we're in i'm in my hometown not this current moment but um my mom just lives east of here and you're in mm -hmm. where your mom is we've been turning on our sniffies and our grinders and our scruffs and I did see somebody hit me up in my ho old hometown of Fremont who did say he was 18 and no. wanted to go mm -hmm. down on me. Well, here's the thing, Cody. 18 is yeah. legal. I would totally go for that. For sex, I would. <laughs> but I think if you're saying the cutoff age of 18 or you're, or you're Cody, you, you said 19, I would actually demand a ID and have to see it. Like, nope, ma'am, I need to see it. And I need to see it when I come over. I need to look at it, inspect it. Like, I am a TSA agent because <laughs> I'll have a flashlight in hand. And if I get any, like, is this a fake ID? Because I know that game. I played that back in the day at one point yeah. when I was your age. And I did that too. And so I do not want to get caught in the act. But 18 is legal. 19 is legal. So if you really determine that they are and they pull out the birth certificate and your TSA mind says, absolutely, they're who they no. are, then go ahead and have some fun. I, I want that 18 year old dick. <laughs> I see what you're saying. Uh, but it, for me, it's just more than the ID. It's two forms of ID. It's your last. <laughs> First your and last report. month. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's a bill from <laughs> a phone bill and a gas bill. I need all of the physical evidence before we you get in these draws. Because the I funny cannot... thing is, what, what would I present my AARP to him as he's presenting <laughs> his legal documents? No, thank you, ma'am. I have not started you're not, AARP. You're, you're not... 
I'm we're definitely a little not. bit above 18. We're we're both just a little bit above 18. Okay. We're like 20 and a half. Okay. <laughs> but I I cannot. I it just scares me too much. I cannot, I would be too afraid that they're underage. So I'm not I'm gonna pass. Thank you. It's a hard but, pass. Yes, yes. But to, uh, to kind of go back to the subject though. Uh, you know that the right wingers are going to say something about this. They're going to grab onto this like oh, leeches, yeah. and they are going to go to high heaven. But uh, I'm not that man. Don't put that man's stuff on me because I'm not here for it. If that was the case, I wouldn't. Str- I wouldn't trust any straight people. So keep that in right. mind. And we're not here to say that all our community is perfect because we're definitely yeah. not. And definitely not. We report on I'm all not of even it. Perfect. And yeah. You know, it's it's sad because it was somebody that was so prized. It was the first out NCAA wrestler. He, you know, everybody was tooting him. And it's just that rise and fall that you hate to see because it's like, oh, you had everything. And then you had to. And it's a sickness, too, I think. Yeah. If you're soliciting nudes and sending them, it goes beyond. It's a sickness and it's sad. And, you know, not only... He's sick mentally, and that's not good. So, okay, well, we love to give advice on this show, and one of them is right up our alley here. It comes from a Reddit thread. By the way, you can always ask us for sex and relationship advice. We are here for you. You can go to tagspodcast.com and email us via the website, or certainly DM us. We'll give that handle at the end of the show. But first off on Reddit, they were asking the question, what are some thoughtful common decency type things you do for your hookup partners i love this they wrote for myself i offer to meet them at my nearest subway station and escort them to my place this reminds me of something you said and (laughs) i I do this because i personally have a terrible sense of direction and tend to get lost easily in unfamiliar neighborhoods especially after dark for some reason this courtesy often goes un reciprocated i plead with guys dude you won't have to meet me at the stations but could you just stand outside your house or apartment building so i don't have to wander around helplessly apparently even that is too much work for some people so what acts of kindness do you bestow upon your seeking strangers i think that's that's a little bit much and i feel like we've been talking about that recently about the the rapper that the gay rapper that was sending people to that got into so much he big dipper big dipper when he was sending people to the wrong address and then we were saying things like no i think it's cool to come down i think it's nice that he meets people at a subway station stop to also see what they look like to see if he really wants to go through with it but I can relate to this a little bit. Tomorrow, I'm going to be share, uh, going shooting an OnlyFans scene with this guy. More to come on that. Uh, but he is all the way out in San Francisco in the, it's called the, um, I think it's the, near the ocean. So it's really far out in San Francisco. And I'm going to take the train and then uh, probably Uber to his place. But he offered to give me a ride to the BART station when we're done. And I'm going to accept that ride to the BART station okay, too. That's and I think nice that's going to be you. really, that's going to be a really nice thing. It's not, a, it is a hookup, but it's like a content creator moment that we're going to do. It's work. But it's <laughs> work. But hey, it's, a work it's, se- it's also sex too. And hey. Not that. So I think that I, I'm, I'm here for that. Um, I just offer like a shower mostly. Like if somebody, you know, when we're done, I offer my shower with a clean towel and they okay. can, you know, I offer that. I also offer a glass of water as well too. And not cocktails. I'm not like Mr. your bartender here. I'm going out for cocktails later. But for you right now, I'll offer <laughs> a glass of water, a clean, fresh towel, and a nice shower. You've taken my showers before, and they're really nice. They um, are. And yeah. What do you offer, and would you meet somebody at the corner bookstore? No. Uh, this sounds crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to shame this man, but no, ma'am, I, I'm not doing that. I'm not coming downstairs to make sure this is what the map app for in your phone is for. The, I know these girl, days you can figure you out. Get lost? You really can't. You, these days with the trains and like you can literally like I'm in a foreign city. I don't really live here anymore. And I want you to get back to your point. But you can put travel trip finder. You can put travel planner on 
all cities to plan your train, your bus, your all this Everything. stuff that'll take you right to where you need to be. Exactly. It will there's a blue dot that tells you exactly where you are. That's ridiculous to me. I'm not coming downstairs. You're lucky I let you in because <laughs> that's what I do for the the people, okay, that come to my house. Uh, I don't have a house right now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> You're homeless, I, I open but yes. I, <laughs> Oh God. <laughs> that sounds horrible, but it's true. Um, but I, yeah, they're lucky I opened the door because that is the gift. That is what I have. I'm, that's the courtesy that I provide for them, that I'm opening the door and I'm allowing them to come into my home. And, and I am the gift. Do you see all of this? Hello. <laughs> right. Yeah, I agree. I mean, <laughs> that's, I guess you, that's, that's the gift. I mean, other people said my house is never as spotless as when a hookup comes over. I'm not so, I mean, my house is, you've been to my house. It's neat. Yes. It's not spotless. It's, neat. it's yeah. neat, but I would, I, the room that we're going to be using, uh, the bed is always clean and neat. And I try not to have too much clutter in the bedroom where, but, and the rest of the house is good. The bathroom is always going to be clean and fresh because I really am going to offer them a shower or inevitably. And what if they just have to use the restroom? You, you know, I don't want them in a dirty bathroom and it's true. all my stuff out. So those kinds of things. Raised, right? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> um, so, yeah. To provide a little bit of context. I am a, I am a traveler when I hook up. I like to go to other people's places. I don't like for them to come over there. I don't want them knowing where I live. I don't want them knowing. You're a traveler. I'm a host, typically, right? <laughs> well, As there a, it is. I'm a consummate host. But I, am, yeah. I am not. I am. I like to go over their house. So if you ever want to hook up with me, just make sure your bathroom's clean. And I'm not going to ask for too much. I don't need water. I just need... <laughs> I need the bussy. That's it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Be clean and ready to go and get it exactly. On. That's all uh, I need. <laughs> okay. Let's do this other one because we got to get allow enough time. Let's not take too much time on this. We got it. Guys with face pics on Grinder. Do you get anxious when expo when exposing yourself, or is it an an advantage from those who have faceless pics? that was the question posed where somebody said, I have a face pic there and I always get a little bit nervous when I'm on the, when I'm on the gym or at somewhere thinking someone might have seen me there and have no idea. Um, this one's a kind of an easy one. And I find with sniffies is the one that I use more often than not. I have face full on face. I also mentioned I do only fans now. So my Twitter shows everything. I don't have a lot to hide. I talk about sex. So I might not be the best example, but for me, pretty much everything's out there. And so I'm going to put my face and just am and, yeah. and market my only fans too, if you want to collab. And so <laughs> I'm just kind of, I'm probably not the best example, but you were talking about it recently too. You were yes. going to try it in Kansas putting your mm -hmm. face versus not what has been the results so i went on grinder in kansas and i think on the last episode i said that it was like 10 percent. actually going back on it and looking it's more like 60 40 and i would say 40 percent are not showing their faces and maybe 45 60 like is that. pretty good though it's pretty good but it's not what i'm used to as far as new york is concerned because like everybody's showing their faces they're very proud of who they are <clears throat> It was a, it was enough people for me to recognize that it was an it was a habit and for me to actually think about whether or not I should put in there if you don't show me your face then I'm not talking to you because that is how I feel I'm not if you don't show me your face I don't know who you are you could be an ex murderer I don't know so I just need to see your face we need to meet in a public place because I'm not doing it and I feel like that anybody <clears throat> who doesn't show their face, I feel like they get less results personally. I know when I didn't show my face on Grindr, I definitely got less hits. And Yeah, you can yeah. be a little bit lazier, I feel, if you have your face up and have people come to you, I feel, yeah. because you're putting it all I'm out lazy. there. The yeah. ones that I'm a little bit lazy too with that, because I've said before, I don't do a lot of the online. So if I'm going to do it, I'm kind of just turning it on. I might look a little bit for a few seconds, but then I'm keeping the browser open and doing other things typically and waiting for people to come to me. But I have also put so much out there, phase, body, 
dick, ass, all that stuff. The ones that don't, to your point, I think then they realize it and they just know that they have to pursue a little bit more. And what you can do if you're on that boat is then you can send personally. If you like somebody, like you like Cody, you can send the face to that send to it. Cody. And <laughs> but just to that person, I just feel if you're gonna go that route where you're discreet or maybe you're worried about your town that you live in you just don't want to put everything out there then you're going to have to be a little bit more of the aggressor a little bit more of the seeker you're going to but when you find somebody you like then send your picture to that person and some of these apps now have it where it'll disappear and you don't have to really worry about it it'll just be out there for a short minute so they can see and i think just think it's a different way so I was on Sniffy's and I don't show my face on Sniffy's, by the way. I just have a, a body and a dick pic on there uh, and it, it, it tracks the boys. But I had somebody on Sniffy's, I think it was not too long ago, today or yesterday or one of those days. And I said, do you have a face pic? And he said, I think you I sent you a face pic on Grinder, and it was a disappearing pic. And I was like, well, how does that help me now? I don't want to know. <laughs> a totally different a, app. A disappearing pic two weeks ago. I, and what? I'm sorry, I didn't file wow. that away. And I've had a lot of <laughs> happen in the last couple of days. Sorry, Ridiculous. but I don't remember that. Sorry, yeah. next. Yeah, no, not happening on that one. Well, we want to allow enough time. Weigh in on this one, though, what you do and what you think about it. We want to hear from you. Go to tagspodcast.com. It's time for Thirst Trap, and it's the weekly ep um, segment that we like to do produced by Straight Up Gay Porn. And this week, they're asking the question, out of these 14 gay porn stars, who took the best photo? I will post this on tagspodcast.com so you could weigh in at home if you're listening to this one. Like I said, it was 14. And shall I go first? Go ahead, darling. We already it's, did a little <laughs> We did. <laughs> it's, our, <laughs> it's our job to vividly describe in an auditory podcast why we picked the one we picked. And I have to go with Raphael James, who is stunning. He looks like he might be in his bathroom, which looks nice and modern and clean. And he just is flexing for us. He's got these great a sleeve tattoo on the camera that's on the arm that's holding the camera phone he's looking at himself in the phone he's by his right bicep is huge he's lean and mean but he's he's got the hugest quads ever nice mm -hmm. rock hard abs i mean he just looks like a beautiful specimen and then you get to the quads which are gargantuan he's perfectly shaved He's got a. He's into weed because he's got it on his left. Oh, that's what that is. I thought that was a Canadian maple leaf. But oh, maybe it not. is. I no, know. I think it's weed. I think. Okay, right. I think it's weed too, <laughs> and it's on his left hip flexor. And then you see this beautiful, long, straight ass, rock hard cock that's just pointing straight down. That is delicious. And he often, I went to. He's just got like muscles upon muscles, and I'm just saying, as a specimen, this is a really pic fun picture to look at. And he gets my pick. In fact, I'm going to vote for him right now. Who do you vote for and why? Well I, well, I thought I was voting for Louis Ricate, but this, first of all, this is, this Thirst Trap Week is thirsting because it is amazing. And I just saw Luscious, who is above Louis Ricate. Mm -hmm. Louis Ricate is beautiful, man. And But yes. I might be picking Luscious because he is stacked and his penis is huge. So he deserves yeah. my vote. <laughs> he is a nice dark skinned man. He's beautiful. He's got beautiful eyes. He's standing in front of a mirror, completely naked with some chains on. He's got his uh it's a mirror selfie and he's got the phone in there and his yeah, but dick is almost I, to his knees. It's a really stellar. Luscious though, I think I went to Luscious's profile though, and he doesn't collab. He wanted to make that no. very apparent. Oh no, well, I don't. Take, I take my vote back. So. Let me see if I was right. I do not collab, is what he says <laughs> in all caps. Why you got to shout out at us? Okay, fine. No, ex <laughs> no exceptions. No booking. No nothing. Solo till I'm married. If there oh, is no, no gift, no, no. and then he goes, if there is no gift or support, I will not reply to the inbox. That nope. is a lot. That and attitude I'm, is the worst. Thank you. So you might want to rethink your. I I am. I'm taking it back. He he got me with the with the with the beautiful body and penis. But no, I'm going back to Louis Ricate. He's a bald, muscly man. 
with the septum piercing and he's so sexy. He's in his bedroom and sitting at the foot in a chair. He's got his hard dick lifted up, his legs wide open, and it is a mirror selfie. He's gorgeous. What's his name and again? I bet he collabs. Louis Ricate. He's right okay. underneath Luscious. Okay. Louis Ricate is down at 3.79%. You know, the one I picked is Raphael James is number one. With twenty what? point, I know I picked number one. I can't help it. I mean, she's. I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch. Drake uh, Malibu says Drake Manson is his favorite. Okay. Drake is number two. Get it? We love it. Well, we want to thank you for watching us live. This has been a great hour of hot topics, sex advice, and so much more. And thirst trapping. You can always follow my co-host Cody. He's a life coach at KMD Coaching on Instagram. Follow his personal account at Mr. Maurice, Mr. Maurice. And he's got a brand new single out. Talk about it. Available wherever you download your music. So get it while it's hot. You can follow me on the gram. I am underscore Steve V. Go to my Twitter at Tags Podcast where you get a preview of all my OnlyFans. And my OnlyFans.com forward slash sexy poppy Steve V. Tomorrow I'm releasing with the it's your coach sf it's your Ooh. coach sf um which a hot scene that we shot last saturday and it's already edited and ready to go and so i'm uploading nice. that tomorrow and it was a lot of fun on a wrestling mat is at his place and so much fun Ooh. i'm doing another scene oh, tomorrow so i just keep it coming it's coming okay and in the meantime <laughs> continue having hot hot Gay, gay sex. sex.